Hi folks, in my last video I told you that Panasonic will announce the new Lumix S9 compact element full frame camera on May the 22 at around 3 p.m. London time. In the meantime, I got additional info about the camera and also about the lens that will be announced this very same day. But before I talk about these new products, take two seconds time to subscribe to the channel, hit the notification button to not miss any of the upcoming rumors. The first good news I can share today is that the Lumix S9 will have built-in IBIS, which is Impressive considering that this is a very compact camera. I've been told that it's about the size of the Sigma FPL, probably a bit less thick than the FPL, that they managed to have the IBIS inside this camera is a very good news. So why this camera will not have an integrated EVF, it's very good to know that at least it has IBIS. In my opinion, if I would have to choose between EVF and IBIS, I would prefer to have IBIS because that's really going to improve the image quality of the camera. And the second important news is that this camera will be announced along a new pancake zoom lens. So we are getting a special lens for this camera that will make it so that the whole package camera plus lens is very compact. And I don't know the aperture of the lens, but I know the focal length of this zoom lens. It's going to be a 18 to 40 millimeter pancake zoom Elman full frame autofocus lens specially designed for the S9. And I can't wait to see it because they told me it's quite a compact lens. So uh, hopefully I can get some images of the S9 and of this lens in the next hours and days. If you happen to find such an image on the web on internet somewhere, you can contact me using that email address you see displayed here or also using the contact box of lrumors.com. The three main features of the S9 are that it's very compact, that it has those special LUTs features like a dedicated button to select your own LUTs and also that it is the most affordable L-mount Lumix camera you can get as of yet. And regarding the size, uh, having a small compact camera and big lenses makes no sense. So it's good that Panasonic will launch this zoom lens. I hope there will be also some pancake prime lens down the road. That would be nice. And as of yet, if you would buy the S9 and you want to tap into the current L-mount uh, lens range, you don't have many options to keep the camera size down along uh, when using also certain lens. I give you an idea of the four options I found right now and made a comparison with the size of the Fujifilm X106. Here you see my first comparison between the Fuji X106 and the Sigma 45mm 2.8 autofocus L-mount lens. That's the most compact autofocus L-mount full frame lens you have right now. You see the Sigma mounted on the FPL. I think the new Lumix S9 is a tiny bit less thick than the FPL, so this would reduce the size even further. But still, it's bigger than the Fujifilm X106. Keep in mind that the Fuji 23mm 2.0 is a 35mm 3.0 in full frame terms so the Sigma 45mm is still a bit faster than the Fuji lens but there are third party full frame options to have the whole package even smaller if for example you use the TT Artisan 50mm 2.0 lens this is a manual focusing lens so now you're much closer to the Fujifilm X106 size but you can reduce this even further using APS-C lenses like for example the Laova 10mm 4.0 APS-C lens and now we are really close to the Fuji X106 size consider also like I told you before that the S9 might be a tiny bit less thicker than the FPL so this would make it really close to the Fujifilm X106 and you would have the versatility of using different lenses. You can still, for example, stick an APS-C zoom lens like the Sigma 10 80mm 2.8 on the S9. And then we also have very exotic manual options like the 7 Artisan 35mm 5.6 pancake lens for the Leica L-mount system. This would really make it the same size of the Fujifilm X106. This was just a quick overview to give you some options for the S9 if you're considering to buy this camera for mainly because it's very compact then you can choose between those lenses to keep the size down to a nearly Fujifilm X106 level. Folks that's all the info I got right now I'm working to get some additional info about for example the question if there will be an external EVF for this camera which would be nice. Also about the screen I still don't have a final confirmation if it will be tilting or fully articulating I don't think it's fully articulating but I'm working on that rumor. 
more importantly i'm trying also to find some images on the web so again contact me if you find something and um, it's quite exciting to see how the camera will be um, as a photographer i would have loved to have an integrated evf but i also can see some advantages to have a very compact body i currently use mainly the sony a7r5 and i realized that uh, it's always a challenge to take it out with you all, all the time because it's a big camera maybe the s9 is a kind of camera that will be so compact and if you fit the right lens on it you maybe can have it always with you all the time and this could be for me at the end really a reason to buy this camera even if it doesn't have an integrated evf i'm happy to see that panasonic is moving into a new direction uh, but the devil is in the detail we really have to see the final camera on may 22 to see how those new LUTs features will work, how the look of the camera is, how big that new zoom lens from Panasonic will be. So the small details will probably determine if this camera will be a success or not. Keep in mind that also Sony will announce a Vlogger APS-C E-mount camera pretty soon. I don't know if it's going to be in late May or early June, but it's coming for sure within the next month. Uh, this will not be a full free camera APS-C, but uh, this is coming from Sony and there will be also a pancake zoom for that camera. So that's quite curious. So there will be a sort of battle between the ZV-10 II and the S9 from Lumix. I didn't hear about other compact cameras yet. I know that Leica will announce a Deluxe 8. Um, the first info I got that it might be announced in May wasn't spot on. Uh, the source now corrected and why he said yeah the deluxe 8 is coming doesn't sound like it's coming may more likely from june so about other cameras i don't have info at least not cameras that are coming in june except of the bigger cameras like the z63 or the canon r52 those are definitely coming but they're not really compact models if you're waiting for compact models that compete against the fujifilm x106 the only options are those three cameras, the ZV-10 II from Sony, the S9 from Panasonic and the Deluxe 8 coming everything pretty soon. I think there will be more compact cameras in autumn. I'm working on those kind of rumors because at least in one case I have more solid info and I'm going to share this soon. And it's going to be a very exciting model for compact camera. And then of course there is the compact medium format camera from Fuji coming 2025. Uh, Patrick from Fuji Rumors is working on that rumor and I'm in contact with him and I will try as soon as he gets info to make also a video about this because yes this will not be a really compact model but for a medium format camera it will be very compact I'm interesting to see how much they can downsize medium format so that it becomes sort of portable it also depends from the lens they are going to make for this camera and stay tuned because uh in my next videos i will share some more details hopefully about the new lumix camera but also about the upcoming sony canon and nikon announcement that will happen within the next uh, four five six weeks so it's quite an exciting time again you would help me a lot if you if you would like this video you know that youtube algorithm uh demands that the more likes you get then you get also featured on the homepage. so it would matter a lot it would help me a lot again subscribe spread the word about this channel i'm excited about this now let me know what you think about this camera hopefully it has success i would love for panasonic and for the l-mount system to have success because i think they made a wise choice to have this partnership with leica segment black, black magic and others but i know they are still not Gaining traction uh, compared to the big three Nikon, uh, Sony and Canon. Uh, so they sh I hope that they will be very innovative. The Sigma Foveon, for example, project is something exciting. Then this S9, but maybe there are other kind of new cameras coming. And I hope that with thanks to the new innovative products, they will succeed to make some sales finally that, uh, so that they get into the top 20, 10 camera charts that we see often from, uh, for example, Japanese stores where Elmont is completely missing. So let's hope this is working out. Folks, that's it for today, but I think we're going to see each other very soon with new rumors. See you soon.